we'll see. So how nature holds minerals is in an unavailable form. Plants have to take up minerals in a soluble form, which means they have to be able to dissolve into water. And so if everything in the soil was soluble, the first time it rained, where would all of our minerals go? The river just wash away. It'd wash right away. So what nature will do is in this massive pool of, of mineral out there, typically maybe less than 1% is ever in a soluble form. Because nature needs to retain that mineral complex. So that also means that the plants don't have this incredible abundance of nutrition. So the intelligence between the microorganisms and the plants is that the microbes come pre-programmed to understand the needs of the plant. They're associated with the plant. Now the other interesting factor here is that the plant will direct the microorganisms. And so what happens is the plant will produce exudates that it picks up from photosynthesis from the sun. So I've got the sun up here putting down photonic rays. The plant picks this up through the leaves and it produces sugars. The very first thing that the plants create are carbohydrates, which is carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. The very first compounds, and these are sugars, and what they do is they begin putting them out through the roots. As much as 30 to 50 percent of the plant's carbohydrates are going to come out through the root. And that the design of this, as these roots begin to exude these sugars, microorganisms need energy. Well, they can't come up above ground and get sunlight energy, so the plant takes the elements, combines them, and puts a food source. Then it begins to grow these microorganism populations in the roots. Now the roots have a mechanism to access the mineral reserves that aren't going to wash away, that aren't available through the intelligence of the microbes. And so the plant will actually direct and grow the microbes that it needs to solubilize the minerals that it wants through the growing season, through this intelligent, interactive, intercommunicative, interrelative process. That's why we put these beneficial microorganisms on the seed, is because we want to establish these microbes in that root system. We want to begin the construction and population of these microorganism communities so that they can assist the plant in picking up this naturally occurring mineral component in the soil around their root systems. Plants are not highly efficient at extracting all soil minerals. A lot of these minerals are very difficult to pull and access. But microbes have much stronger enzymes, much greater ability to solubilize things. So the plant says, I'll feed you, you feed me. And we have several types of these microbes. You have microbes that are mutualists. They're free roaming. They'll get their food from the plant and they'll solubilize things on the root system. You also have symbiotic relationships with microbes where they actually tap right into. These microbes will tap right into the plant root and they become part of the plant. And then like mycorrhizal fungi will extend its hyphae out. And wherever this hyphae goes, it's able to dissolve and pull in nutrition. The same thing happens with 
nitrogen fixing bacteria. They'll form nodules inside these root systems and they'll take the N2 gas out of the soil air and they'll change it into forms of nitrogen for the plant. And so the plant will feed the biology, then the biology feeds the plant, and in this system there's no waste. I'm not applying a whole bunch of nitrogen and having it flush down through the soil profile whenever it rains or we irrigate, and we lose it. So since to, so minerals are unsoluble, to become soluble it requires water, or, or that was one of the examples, do the microbes actually do something with moisture or something to make it soluble or is there other ways to make things soluble without using like water? Well you have to have a certain amount of moisture in the soil just for the think. microbes to live. But their conversion of the minerals comes through their enzymes where they have the ability to take something and dissolve it and then reconstruct it. So you have to understand it in the process of nutrition, let's say that we've got nitrogen, phos, and we've got potassium. Okay, these are your, your, your three minerals that, that fertilizer companies like to sell the most of. And so what ultimately happens with, with these elements is nitrogen through this whole line of conversion is ultimately designed to become a protein. So, and then our phosphates are ultimately going to become lipids or what you would call fats and oils. And then our potassium becomes part of our compounds that run our cellular pumps to get nutrition in and out. And you've also got, you've got carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, hydrogen in here that become our carbohydrate structures. These are our sugars. And so what's happening here is all of these elements in their simple individual forms have to get combined and recombined and recombined so that they become either part of the plant structure or part of the nutrition. So everything that gets built above and below ground, you have made up of minerals. But they're all recombined into a different structure. And the same thing is, is when we look at trying to accomplish nutrition back here on this end, a nitrogen will start here, but through all of these enzymatic conversions, all of these proteins that have the intelligence to make all of these enzymatic changes, hundreds and hundreds of them, they take these simple compounds and put them into something different. And so for us to create amino acids and peptides down here and proteins, we have to have this assembly line of construction. And, and it goes from step to step to step to step. And all of these compounds, all of our lipids, our fats and our oils are constructed the same way. Different enzymes, different intelligence. And so all of these components are made through an assembly line of in intellectual, divinely brilliant carpenters or enzymatic processes that make these compounds. So with us, we don't replace bone, we don't replace hair, we don't replace tissue, we don't heal, without all of this happening simultaneously. Our, our microorganisms are taking nutrition from our food and they're rebuilding all kinds of things in our bodies constantly. That's your immune system at work. And so it's the same thing going on in the soil. Everything is coming in in elemental form in the soil and now it's being changed into more complex forms. When we eat it, we eat a very complex form. It's getting dismantled. We don't live off of anything that we eat. Nothing. We live off of 
it being dismantled and reconstructed into the proper form of nutrition by our microbes. Thank heavens they're programmed intelligently because we don't know how to do this. This is so far beyond our comprehension. But our microbes then dismantle it, restructure it. So do we live off of the food we eat or do we live off of the microbial metabolites? So question, with the crap they call food at the grocery stores, like all this processed, highly refined, highly intoxicated crap, these microbes still are doing their job but we're, in essence, also killing them because we are feeding them these toxins, these pathogens, and they can only do so much. And I was going to add, I bet they have a challenge figuring out what to do with uh, well, yeah. Mountain Dew. Because it's... <laughs> oh, you have to go there, didn't you? Because, you have to not, go there, Matt. It's not... Sure. I mean, we're, 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 Dew, we're, feed, we're feeding them stuff that is just not even a part... What we should not even be putting in there. Okay. All right. So... We, we've brought up a lot of really incredibly good points here. And this is really important to understand because this is how biology works everywhere. In the soil, in the gut, on the plant, on us. Right? Everything that goes into a system has an effect. Everything. What type of food we eat, what type of liquids we drink, what types of things we put on our skin. The environment is what begins to set up who shows up. And microbes only come if they're encouraged to come. They're not automatic. Okay, Pathogens cannot come after a healthy plant. There is those laws in nature that bar that from happening. Pathogens are designed to come after unhealthy plants. That's their intelligence. The same thing in a system. I have a gut population. It doesn't matter if it's a soil or if it's a gut. The things that I put into that soil or I put into my system will then shift my gut populations. And those populations are designed to create different forms of nutrition. So, instead of eating fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, and things that have nutri nutrient components to them, let's say I eat a whole bunch of processed food. That food will shift your gut microflora. And then you begin to get the metabolites from that set of microbes that we establish in that environment. You use the word influence and encourage, so is that what's happening? It's encouraging and influencing um, uh, what we're eating, the processed food, it's encouraging certain Always. things to happen. Always. And it's the same in the soil. You encourage someone to show up. Right now, the plant is saying, I want the good guys to show up, but what if I've used chemicals and, and way too much tillage and I've taken out my higher organisms, my fungi, my protozoa, my nematodes, and all these wonderful things above bacteria that the system needs to work right? Well, if I've eliminated all of those microorganisms, that system isn't going to respond for the plant, even though the plant's feeding them. So, what I've got to do is now come back and change the environment. And we can switch that very quickly by putting the beneficial microbes back in and making sure they have minerals and a food source, they'll repopulate with the assistance of the plant. And then the intelligence now exists correctly between the plant, the microbe, and the soil minerals. We don't have a lack of mineral nutrition in our soil. We have depleted a lot of our soluble pools in here because a lot of them we've never put back. We put back NPK, but we don't put back 
trace elements. We don't put back dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of trace elements. Yet when our plant grows, we take those out. There are more trace elements there than show up on a soil report. Microorganisms can access those. <coughs> but if we farm and we grow plants without microorganisms, you are not going to access that reserve of unavailable nutrition. And so this is why farmers buy so much fertilizer, is because over the courses of farming, we have done everything imaginable to eliminate microbes. It goes back to all germs are bad, all microbes are bad, let's kill them all. Well, when you kill a microbe, you now get to do its job. And we are not good at doing their job, and it becomes very expensive to replace them. And that's what we're attempting to do when we buy way high amounts of fertilizers. And so these microorganisms are all there because of what goes into the system. And that's what we want to manage. When we understand the intelligence that these microbes are all programmed with. So stop and think about this for half a second. Millions of different species of bacteria. Who programmed them? And they all do different things. You look at millions of species of fungi. Who programmed them? Wasn't us. <laughs> I'm not it, taking credit for that. It was not us. We don't even know a fraction of a percent of who they are and what they do. We do understand that they're mostly beneficial, but we don't understand all that's there, and we certainly don't have the ability to program them and, and put this divine intelligence into them. And see, the thing is, is what we're seeing here in this course of just a plant is the plant has its own intelligence. The microbes have their own intelligence, and the minerals have their own intelligence. But all of these systems are in communication. And they all understand each other, and they are all present. Sometimes I'm convinced that the only dummies in this equation are us. We are the ones that don't understand how this works and that divine intelligence that allows all of this to be interactive. So, yes, everything from a plant, whether it's in the root or it's on the leaf, the same thing can happen on the leaf that happens in the root system. You have two methods of getting nutrition into plants, through the root, through the leaf. And so it's the same with us. We have a microbial community in our digestive system. That intelligence is there. We alter it depending on what we put in. And whatever that input is, then becomes a nutrient source that then becomes a fuel for your neurological system, your respiratory system, your lymph system, your reproductive system, your digestive system, all the way through the whole body, that then becomes the fuel that runs your system. And so if you're a jet, do you want to run on jet fuel or do you want to run on unleaded? JP4. Okay. That's Sorry, it ain't got a fuel yet. <laughs> that's the systems that are in place. And if we ignore those systems, then we can either create damage and disease and illness if we pay attention to these systems and we begin to understand how they work, then we can intelligently work with them to do what they do. And so, as we go into this process of cellular intelligence, you're going to see exactly how this works. <laughs>